Hello, TPP Universe. Jerry Graham here with uh, Alex McNabb, two former professional wrestlers. Well, not yeah. He, I'm a, I'm a current wrestler. You're you're a former wrestler, and uh, yeah, we're we're at the pre-show tonight. You know, Alex, we're here tonight to see Reckoning. Yeah, and uh, I believe it's going to be a good night, especially for all the fans watching because i've seen the match cards for the pre-show and i quite like what i've seen there and we got a phenomenal match card for ragnar we've got a title match actually we've got two title matches in that match card what actually think, we have we have more than two title matches brother we've got we've got the tag team titles that are going to be defended the tpp title is going to be decided tonight the adrenaline championship and recently announced by uh the beautiful melinda guerrero and uh and Die Hard, they, they announced that there was going to be a new hardcore-type belt, and the name would be revealed later on tonight on Reckoning. But, uh, yeah, there's going to be all kinds of title matches tonight. And plus, you know, my boy Damien Gamer is going to be in action tonight. I didn't think it was going to happen, but he's going to be in action tonight. Yeah, that, that's going to be an interesting matchup. And also, with the hardcore title match, you know, we don't have a name for it yet, but uh, someone has a chance to cement their name in a legacy as the first-ever champion of that title. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that that's. I wish I was involved in that match. I wish I was involved somewhere on this card. I mean, I don't mind being on the pre-show. You know, you're a cool dude, Alex. But uh, I would love to be back in the ring. You know, pulling up the tights, putting on the knee pads, putting on the kick pads, and laying the smackdown on some jabroni. You know, but unfortunately, that's not the case. And uh, it looks like we're being told that it's time for us to tell you what to expect tonight on Reckoning. And I'm I'm looking forward to this. We've got seven action-packed matches just on the actual card. Plus, we got the pre-show matches coming up in just a few minutes. But uh, So we're just waiting on them to pull up that beautiful graphic that shows all these matches that are going to happen. And, uh, you know, to kick off the thing things tonight, Mark Lester, my boy Damian Gamer. You know, me and Damian Gamer go back from A&D. Yeah, that's going to be a good matchup. It's going to be quite a test for Mark Lester as well against Damian Gamer, who did have a match against Die Hard at the previous pay-per-view. That is, that is true, he did. He wrestled a Met Network Collision, came up a little short. But this, the Hardcore Championship, look at this, Hanzo Oshihara. He's one of my personal favorites of going against Carnage and then going against James Braden. Now, I'm voting for either Carnage or Hanzo. I'm not a big fan of Braden. I can understand why, because, you know, you're an XTCO member and he was an XTCO member. So that's and we've got exclusive DLC versus the... The, Coco, yeah, they, uh, the Coco Buffs, they recently changed their names due to a fan that was on, uh, they, to, they were in attendance, they had a sign, don't call yourselves the Chocolate Drops, call yourselves the Coco Buffs, and so they changed their names to the Coco Buffs. The Coco Buffs, and then we've got Sage versus Victor Yosef now, these two guys just are a good talent for TBP and should be good for the future. So I'm looking very much forward to this match. Me too. I, I'm looking forward to it as well. And, you know, they had a previous run in which Sage was on the losing end of that. But I can almost say the same thing for this man, Bryce. He's had a horrible past couple of weeks when he's been trying to, you know, get the jump on Brick Wall. And Brick Wall came back and he's just been beating the crap out of Bryson. And I don't feel bad at all for Bryson, but I'm not a big fan of Brick Wall either. So. And then we've got Jordan Moore versus Die Hard. A match of the ages here in TVP and only on Reckoning as well. You know, the thing is, like, I faced Die Hard. I've wrestled with Jordan Moore. Jordan Moore's put down Die Hard once before. I think he can do it again, but you cannot top the main event tonight. Adam D. Whitmore versus, versus Th Scythe. Scythe is like our own apex predator in TVP. But I got faith in my boy Adam D. Whitmore. He gets all the ladies, and he is going to show Scythe why he was born to wrestle. I sight is good, don't get me wrong. But, but Adam D. Whitmore is better. <laughs> well, we'll find out tonight, won't we? Uh, at the main event for Reckoning. And man, what a an, what an night, man. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope that you are too, because we can just sit here, relax as wrestlers, as ex-wrestlers, as pr normal wrestlers, and just relax and see people put on a show. That That is, that is true, and... Uh, and I just, I'm really looking forward to that hardcore match. I, I love the hardcore environment. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the main event, too, because, you know, I, I've been following Adam D. Whitmore, and I've been following Scythe. You know, luckily for me, I got out of TCO before I got beat down by Scythe, thank God. But, uh, you know, Scythe can hit hard. I've seen him, uh, I've seen him, you know, in the training facility, and he 
when he works, he works out hard. But uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be a great match between those two tonight, no doubt about it. I agree with that, and uh, I've got to go for props on my boy safe because, you know, Scottish groove is Scottish, man, you know what I'm saying? But the match that I'm very much looking forward to is, well, the main event match and the diehard match because uh, it's going to be basically Tudor versus the master. That is, that is, that is true, and uh, we'll, we'll actually talk about that after the first pre-show match. We'll get more a little bit more in-depth with the diehard and Jordan Moore, a uh, little bit of their history, but... Uh, Right now, we're actually getting ready to go ringside to see our very first pre-show match. And we've, you know, we've got these three beautiful pre-show matches scheduled, you know, and then we got Reckoning. You know, that's 10 matches in one night. That's, that's just amazing. So, uh, yeah, we will be back with you guys in just a few moments. So just sit tight and, uh, you know, enjoy the pre-show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the pre-show for TVP Reckoning. I'm Lance Seeley, along with my uh, broadcast colleague, Tyler Case. And uh, we're getting ready to kick off some action here. Travis Porter and Atlas uh, in tag team action against uh, Darren Trinidad and Rollin Ryder, who uh, just a couple of nights ago on Strike Zone, you know, unfortunately ate defeat and did not get a number one contender match, you know, for the tag team titles that are going to be contested later on tonight. And uh, so as Atlas and Travis Porter coming to the ring for uh, Rollin Ryder and Darren Trinidad, they both, both of these teams want to make an impact. Um, and I think that this is going to be uh, a very hotly contested matchup between these two teams. Um, you know, figure whoever wins this is going to possibly put themselves in future contention uh, for the tag team titles. Uh, when um, you... Definitely. Okay, and then... Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I know you guys don't know who uh, Tyler Case is, or myself, you just know me as uh, backstage personnel, but uh, both myself and Tyler Case both have a little bit of in-ring experience uh, from many, many years ago, and uh, we've taken our talents to the broadcast table. <laughs> our talents can truly go. That, that's, that's right, and uh, so I'm just, if you had to make a pick here, I, I don't know who I'd really pick to win this, I mean... Uh, Darren Trinidad and Rollin Ryder have been a tag team for uh, for many years uh, when they worked the Independence, and Atlas and Travis Porter have been uh, a tag team here in TPP now for about a year. And, you know, they came in independently, but you know they've been a team ever since. Uh, I think it was April of last year. So uh, yeah, I think it was April of last year. So now they've been oh, and a big uppercut there from uh, Darren Trinidad to yeah, Travis Porter's Porter. Yeah, Porter's definitely gonna fill that one. Oh yeah, and, and and right from the get go here, and, and like I was saying, I think that for both of these teams, this is even though it's the pre-show, it's a big match. Oh, most definitely. And I think if uh, Ryder and Trinidad want any chance to this match, they're definitely going to have to segregate Porter, like they've already begun doing. Because I think, think the big man Atlas is definitely going to be a winning factor as far as Travis Porter and Atlas go. Oh, most definitely. I mean, Atlas, you know, he 200 and I think they weighed him today, and he weighed uh, 290 plus pounds, you know, and then you got uh, Darren uh, Trinidad, who's, I think, 237, and Ron Ryder, who's around 230, and then Travis Porter, who's like 200 pounds. So, I mean, Ooh. yeah, they, they yeah, nice that big spinning Porter. wheel kick there, but uh, they definitely want to, uh, like you were saying, they want to consolidate and keep Porter. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if the comes in, it's only a matter of time. Ooh, beautiful. Just in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and a beautiful drop kick there by Travis Porter to the uh, to the back of Rollin Ryder. They're sending Rollin Ryder flying, followed up by the side headlock here. And uh, Travis Porter is not, you know, he's not one that's going to go down without a fight. Though he will, he will fight tooth and nail until he can't get up anymore. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's a bad DDT. Very bad. Right on the top of the head there into the cover here. One, one, two, two, and a close two feet. Yeah, yeah, very, very close. Uh, long two count there for, for Rollin Ryder and as you saw Rollin Ryder there just a, a fury of rage using his strikes to his uh, to his advantage there but Atlas uh -oh, came out. in and ooh, ooh. and, and I look at because of the distraction there uh, I don't think that uh, Ryder realizes that Porter was you know coming back into the ring but Trinidad was able to uh, kind of catch him off guard there and put him and into uh, posi position focusing Atlas as well yeah yeah exactly and 
And I'm really excited, I'm, and this is our first time here at the commentary table together, but I'm really excited for it tonight. Not just the pre-show, you know, because we've got uh, two other action-packed matches to come, but uh, I'm also excited for what's going to happen later on on Reckoning. So. Definitely. I mean, we got huge matches on Reckoning. We have the confirmed match of Damien Gamer versus Mark Lester. I think everybody's really looking to see how Gamer does in his first pay-per-view since he was fired at Network Collision. I mean, he faced a for defeat at the hands of Die Hard. Yeah, we have, exactly. We had a TPP Championship match. That's going to be huge. And uh, it's going to be an amazing night all around. Yeah, exactly, and then we're going to crown our first ever tag team champions. We have the Coco Buffs that are going to be squ uh, squaring off later uh, tonight against uh, Exclusive DLC. And, uh, you know, Exclusive DLC, they've just came re came into TPP recently, but they have so much so much heat behind them. And th like I said, I mean, they, they're definitely going in as the fan favorites into that matchup. And so, f like I was saying, whoever wins this matchup, you got to believe that's going to possibly put them in future title contention because, you know, they... Who doesn't want to have gold around their waist? Oh, absolutely. That's definitely a mile for any and all su superstars in TPP and outside of TPP. I mean, if you have gold, then you're basically the man of that division. Everybody's looking to you. Everybody's challenging you. You're the main event. So everybody's going to want to taste that gold at one point or another. Oh, yeah. And uh, as you, I don't I don't know if uh, the fans caught that, but uh, Darren Trinidad pulled down that top rope and, and helped uh, Travis Porter take a really dangerous spill oh, to the outside. Oh, sent on to the outside as well. Exactly. And I got to hand it to Rollin Ryder and Darren Trinidad. Right now, they are working uh, very well um, as a team. I mean, we saw on uh, Frontline and... On, or I mean, yeah, on Frontline, we saw a little bit of, I don't want to say uh, miscommunication between them, but... Oh, and a bit rock. Porter. Yeah, he yeah, huge, that tag. yeah, huge drop kick, and that's the thing. I mean, Travis Porter, he needs to get this tag. He needs to get the big man in here. He does. And Atlas is calling. But, but I, I think part of it might be. Um, I don't want to. Oh, okay. Now Porter's sending uh, Rollin Ryder to the uh, to the corner. There get the go. big man in here. Now he's really gonna change. And for Rollin Ryder, this is not going to feel good as, uh, like I was saying, you know, I mean, <laughs> Atlas is 290 plus pounds, somewhere in that area. I mean, he's pushing, you know, almost 300 pounds. He's a, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big boy. And he has the strength to show it, too. Oh, yeah. And, and look, look and, speaking of strength, just... Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Just completely planted uh, Rollin Ryder, followed up by the elbow drop into the cover here. That, One... <laughs> The near 300 pound elbow just dead weight dropped on your chest that cannot go but i got it i got it oh eat it i was gonna say i got a hand to Rollin Ryder, but he just ate a huge headbutt there <laughs> one two and a two and trinidad from his oh missed it by that much exactly trinidad sensed that Ryder was in danger but mm. luckily Ryder was able to kick out but right now Ryder is not in a good way he, he's oh getting, most definitely not the big man he's is tossing him around literally around the ring and this is this is like we were we're, we're saying atlas is the saving grace of the travis porter and atlas team i mean he's he's their saving grace he really is this is a shame because it sounds taken away from travis porter but in all honesty you can't take any travis porter but when it comes down to the tag team matches when he's starting to get beat down and it looks like he may not have it in him then atlas is definitely like i said the saving grace he comes in he throws his 300 pound weight and strength around like it's nobody's business and gets it pretty close to bringing it home. They've had some unfortunate losses, but they're Atlas definitely almost saves up for him. Oh yeah, I mean Atlas is he he's an all-around good guy, you know, and he's so he's got that unmitigated power that so many people don't have and he just you know, he like we're seeing, I mean, Rollin Ryder, he needs to get Dar Darren Trinidad sitting there pacing on the uh, on the apron because he knows that his partner's getting tossed around. But see, that's what that's what Atlas does. He does damage, and then he'll tag in Travis Porter for the, the speed element of it. Uh, absolutely, and I think that's such a great tag team. I mean, if you look at Rollin Ryder and, and Trinidad, they're about the same size, and they're both pretty technical power type wrestlers. But when you put them against a team that has both massive strength and unstoppable speed like Travis Porter and uh, Atlas here then it's I'd say it's almost always a winning combination but we'll see how it goes now that Porter's back in the exactly and, and you know like you were saying I mean with Rollin Ryder and Darren Trinidad they have 
you know, strength and a, a technical ability over uh, Travis Porter, you know, because they're about 30 pounds. Both of them are about 30 pounds bigger than Porter. And I think Porter is kind of like, uh, <clears throat> he's like that smaller dog in the fight that doesn't want to give up. And he doesn't realize when he's outpowered or outmatched physically. I don't think he ever realizes that fully. <clears throat> no, but that's not always a bad I mean, think of taking that beating or he feels like he's close to loss or, or even if his pride starts in his way, that's just a drop him to actually win it and bring it home and feel that accomplishment. So even though it can put him in trouble sometimes, I don't think that's always a bad thing. Well, as you see, Travis Porter there, a flurry of knees right to the uh, right to the chest. Like you said, a uh, little guy just won't stay dead. Exactly, and Travis Porter now starting to build a little bit of momentum here, but, but Rollin Ryder able to turn it around. And a big flurry in the ropes. Now, what is that? Uh, okay, so now Rollin Ryder, trying, he's going to get his tag team partner. And this is what, you know, I, I think that this match almost lacked can, the frequent tags from either team. I mean, uh, normally we see, you know, much quicker tags in, you know, keeping each person fresh, but... I don't know, I just, I think that for Rollin Ryder and, and Trinidad, they, they kind of have a one-upsman showmanship for each other. And Atlas, I think he's had enough here. And he went for that big clothesline, but he missed as uh, Trinidad was able to move out of the way there. Atlas now showing his power. And he's not the legal man right now. Travis Porter's still the legal man. Yeah, it's got to be careful with that. It would be terrible for them if they were to lose by disqualification because Atlas let it's overprotecting us to get the better of it. Oh, them. wait a second. Trinidad, oh! Oh, wow. Trinidad is calling for, he's saying it's, oh, oh and as you saw, uh, Rollin Ryder kind of tripped uh, over Travis Porter there. That was a little uh, unorthodox for that to happen, but. This could be the end of it. What's Ryder, what's, uh, Ryder's keeping Porter down on the outside into the cover here. One, One two, two, and a two count. Oh. Wow. Oh, wait a second, Trinidad setting it up again, and I don't really know what he calls that, that finishing maneuver, but going for the cover here, and. One, One, two, two. three, and Rollin Ryder and Darren Trinidad picked up the win on the pre-show tonight, so congratulations to them. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, I, like I was saying earlier, I, I think maybe, you know, by whoever won this match, maybe in the future they might get possible contention for the tag team titles. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen immediately, but maybe in the near future. And... Uh, we gotta. We actually. We have to cut back up to our broadcast colleagues up in the uh, up in the broadcast panel. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with uh, you know our our second pre-show match, which I'm sure everybody's gonna enjoy that one. I know I'm gonna personally enjoy it. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it as well. So we will see you guys in just a few moments. And we're back up here at the broadcast panel, and that was a that was an intense tag team match. Atlas and Travis Porter uh, take tasting defeat tonight against uh, Darren Trinidad and Rollin Ryder, and tough break for uh, for Atlas and Porter though. Yeah, man, it was a close call, and it's just, it's a shame to lose in this business. But fair play to Rollin Ryder and Adrian Trinidad. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and uh, like you were saying earlier, the match you were really looking forward to was a. Uh, Die Hard versus Jordan Moore. And uh, the guys in the back, um, they actually put together a video package. And we're going to see that in just a, about a minute or so. But uh, before we get into that, I mean, there's a lot of history with these two. Uh, dating, uh, you know, 10 years ago, you know, before I even, you know, was started, before I even started training with Die Hard. And uh, there's a lot of history there between those two. And I, I definitely think tonight's going to be, uh, it's going to be a barn burner, no doubt about it. I agree with you, and also along with the 10 years of history, there's also 10 years of heat from Jordan Moore. So this is going to be an interesting matchup to see if Jordan Moore can prevail or if Die Hard will add another victim to his list. Well, you know, the funny thing is, and, and I hate to say it like this because, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of Die Hard, you know, which is a, apparent, you know, but uh, he's never lost in, the street fight in, in a street fight environment, which tonight's match against Jordan Moore is a street fight, so... You know, right now, Die Hard's, I think, like 5-0 and in street fights, and that's that's impressive. You know, even in his retirement, he's still able to win, but uh, we're going to actually shoot over to that video package right now, so uh, enjoy, folks. Jordan Moore gets his opportunity. 
TPP Championship. Die Hard is the defending champion. The anticipation is killing me. Die Hard versus Jordan Moore, the TPP Championship. Jordan Moore trying to get out of Die Hard Shadow tonight at over the limit. And Jordan Moore with the BTM drop and a two count. The Die Hard drop and a two count for And again, the BTM drop. Jordan Moore setting something up in the corner here. Not sure what he's doing. The kick to the head. Jesus, the kick to the head. One, two, three. And yes, we have a new TPP champion. Jordan Moore has slayed the beast. One thing everybody forgets to remember is I destroy everybody's idols. God, it feels good to be back. Let me cut you off right there, Jordan. I'm glad you're back, but you have a match tonight. It doesn't even look like Jordan Moore came to compete. And Jordan Moore calling for something here. Big spear to James Braden. Ken, is that it? One, two, three, and Jordan Moore picks up a big victory in his return to TPP tonight. So you beat James Braden. Well, tonight you face Bryson. And Bryson here has a steel chair and, oh, getting himself disqualified here. But Jordan Moore pushing him out of the ring. So Jordan seems to really have a plan. You beat Bryson, you beat James Braden. But you can never beat me. And Dyer coming to the ring. He's got no business being out. Dyer with a steel chair here to the back of Jerry Graham causing the disqualification. Jordan Moore staring down Die Hard with a cold stare. A lot of people ask me why, Die Hard, why did you cause Jerry Graham to beat Jordan Moore via disqualification? Jordan Moore, I'm going to give you one opportunity to face me at TBP Reckoning. If you can beat your opponent tonight. And James Braden coming to the ring. But no, he eats a spear from Jordan Moore, and Jordan Moore turning his attention to over to extreme here. Big spear in the corner. Die Hard, I am coming for you. You can throw all your little bodyguards, you can throw all your little thugs and all your heavies that you can at me. I'm still going to keep coming. You think you're going to send somebody out here and have them try to, try to beat up on me for a little bit? That's the best you've got right now? Trust me. It is official. Jordan Moore versus Die Hard at TPP Reckoning. The second match, the final match. And man, I, I tell you, I tell you what, McNabb, seeing that video just reminds me of just how dangerous Die Hard can be. I mean, but the fact that Jordan Moore, you know, beat Die Hard, you know, at over the limit in 2011, you know, put Die Hard into retirement or at least helped Die Hard into his retirement. That's a big deal in itself. You know, just doing that, you know, Die Hard had an iconic, you know, 18 year wrestling career and, you know, he was taken out by somebody he had trained. Yeah, and uh, at least for Jordan Moore's uh, side of things, you know, he's had the experience of being Die Hard before. And also, you know how you say Die Hard is dangerous? Well, Jordan Moore has at least uh, some knack of knowing if someone's going to try and, you know, come and attack him or anything like that. So he's got that sixth sense, which can help you in a street fight, because if any of TCO guys come out, at least he can then deal with them and then deal with Die Hard if th that does happen. Exactly. I mean, it, it, it's happened the past couple of weeks, you know. Uh, it happened in his match against uh, against Extreme. You know, jo uh, James Braden tried to sprint down to the ring, and he caught a big O spear from from Jordan Moore, and Jordan Moore put James Braden in his place. But I'm 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 hoping tonight that Die Hard will be a man and, and do it on his own. I mean, we all know that Die Hard can he can win matches on his own. We all know this that that's a given. But as long as he can do it on his own, I think it'll give a respect. For everybody, if he, you know, just proves that he doesn't need TCO just tonight. Tonight, he needs to do it on his own. Yeah, Die Hard needs to do it on his own, like you said, to gain respect. But also, I think if uh, Jordan Moore does a bit of a pace game tonight, 
I feel as though Die Hard might be in a bit of trouble. You know, he's getting older now, Die Hard is. But if Die Hard remains on the beating, you know, I feel it might be Die Hard's match. But if John Moore uses that pace, then it might be Moore's match. Depends on what we see, though. I, I definitely, definitely agree. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's this is coming from a guy that was trained by TCO, you know, a couple of years ago. But with Jordan Moore, he was training with them when they were doing the super – you know, cutthroat type training and they were, you know, the, the running joke of training 23 out of 24 hours a day, you know. So they were, you know, Jordan Moore, Brick Wall, they were all right there when Die Hard was still in his prime, you know, 10 years ago when he was still young enough to go to the top rope or do some crazy acrobatic stuff compared to the training I got, which was a very much more slow, methodical pace. And, uh, you know, so I think in my honest opinion, I think that this is Jordan Moore's night. I think Jordan Moore is going to show Die Hard what's up. He's going to show Die Hard that he can beat him again. But guess what, McNabb? It's almost time for our second pre-show match. Yeah, and this is going to be interesting. We've got to go down to the broadcast table at the moment as uh, it looks as though the guys are ready to start announcing that match. All right, and we will see you guys in just a few moments. Hello again, TPP Universe. I'm Lance Seeley. I'm joined I'm with, yep, with my broadcast partner, Tyler Casey. We're up. We're on our second match for the pre-show. And, uh, you know, the guys up on the broadcast panel are, are having a blast, you know, getting you guys excited for later on. But right now we've got Masuma, uh, who is a, a newcomer to TPP. And uh, unfortunately for Masuma, he has a very... I'm going to take Mr. Christopher Billings' words, but he has a very tall order tonight uh, that goes o almost 400 pounds and stands at roughly 7 foot 2. Uh, and if you don't know who I'm describing yet, this man's name is Cerberus, and he he hurts his opponents very He gives me nightmares. He is, he is a very scary individual. I mean, he, he's got such a, a, a dominating presence about him. I mean, the... Again, I hate taking Christopher Billings' uh, phrases and words, but the camera doesn't do him justice. Oh, seeing this man in person is so much different than watching him perform. It's, it truly is terrifying. I mean, his physique, his size, his stature, his presence, everything about this man just... It, here. It, exactly, and like I was saying, I mean, he's roughly, you know, like, I think I think he's seven foot two or seven foot one, somewhere in that area, and, you know, he just, when he grabs those ropes, it pulls that whole rope down from turnbuckle to turnbuckle when he pulls it down, you know, like I said, he's a little over, I think he's 420 some odd pounds, you know, that's almost pure muscle, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not dead weight, and uh, so for Masuma, you know, I'm, I'm wishing him luck. I, I'm going to pull for Masuma, though. I think if Masu Masuma's got many years of experience. I think he can I think he can get the job done tonight. Oh, uh, I'd, I'd like to agree with you, but I'm sorry. Cerberus is just too much of a force. Uh, I, I wish the best for Masuma, I do. But as you see, Masuma there, uh, trying to get into zone. He's trying to get in some kind of zone and uh, answering with a kick, though. Uh, a wish two Exactly, some kicks here. He tried to give a shoulder block to Cerberus, and it did not work. It did no, not it work at all. And he's he's kicking Cerberus, and Cerberus is telling him to keep coming at him. And look at Cerberus is backing up here, just staring at at Masuma as uh, Cerberus again telling telling Masuma to just bring it on. And Masuma's, and Masuma's answering right back. Ooh, ooh, big boot there, just completely uh, taking down Masuma. And, and I think what it was is I think he may have angered the enlarged beast known as Cerberus. Most definitely. I mean, a guy like Cerberus doesn't expect you to taunt him. I mean, he can taunt you and throw you around the ring all he wants to, but when you basically say, hey, you're not that bad, just bring it on right to his face, you're definitely asking for punishment from sheep. Yeah, exactly, and and for Masuma, I, I I have all the faith in the world in Masuma's ability to do it, but maybe I was wrong in assuming that he'd be able to do it. I mean, I think his he he's taking his experience and oh thinking that God. that's too, that that's going to be better than Cerberus's strength. I mean, Masuma's got many years of you know wrestling over in Japan and uh, wrestling all over the world, but I don't know if he's wrestled too many 400 plus pound men. I mean, Masuma's uh, 187 pounds. Oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm just destruction and carnage right now. It, 
I don't even think Masuma's moving anymore. They, exactly. And right now, Masuma's just kind of being the, the beating post for Cerberus. And uh, Cerberus is kind of just having his way right now. He's just doing what he wants to do. Yeah. You're about experience versus... You, know, you can have all the experience in the world. doesn't mean that they're all good experiences. But yeah, can, it's definitely a match decider. I mean, just... He's deadlifted him like three or four times now and just dropped all of his weight down onto the ring with him. Mizuma may have experience from wrestling in Japan, but I doubt he's ever faced anybody as fierce as Cerberus. It, exactly, and Cerberus going for a, a cover there and only a two count. Now, I don't know if it was wise for Mizuma to kick out. I mean, I, I put oh. Mizuma a big kick there going Knocking off the Cerberus. Oh, oh, uh, he's using his speed. He's used, and that's him. Oh! Big uh, uh, standing shuffle. Oh, and another. I, that's two. Shuffle, yeah, that's a shuffle sidekick, I suppose, is what we'll call that. But Masuma's. Uh, uh, as much as we were just talking about him, you know, not always having good experiences, he had enough experience to place that foot under the chin and, and knock the big man down. Oh, um, uh, definitely. Uh, I, I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. I'm glad to see that him is coming back and doing his best. Oh, and there it goes. Yeah, as soon and, and unfortunately for Masuma, that's all it takes is one big right hook from uh, from the big man, and it changes the the entire tone. He, I mean, look at that flurry that Masuma put together and knocked Cerberus off of his feet multiple times, and then Cerberus just comes in one right hook and made him out flat. I mean, I'm still gonna hope for Masuma to do the best. Maybe he can pick up submission, and you know something quick and get the victory because if he does it'd be a huge upset over Cerberus but unfortunately I, I'm, I'm foreseeing that Cerberus is going to utterly destroy oh Jesus we, we, we oh, saw God. the oh my god we saw this in that handicap match in the choke slam we, we saw we saw Cerberus pick up two men on on front line and choke slam both of them square in the middle of the ring you know just and th those are both 200 plus pound men and, and as you see Estenda was saying something to Cerberus there and, and uh Masuma was savvy enough to move out of the way of the bound for Hades clothesline. That would have been the end of the match. Come on, Masuma. Masuma going for the cover here. And, and the and, rope break uh, in. Rope break. And, you know, for Masuma, he's got to remember Cerberus is, you know, seven foot tall. He, he's a big man. It, you've got to make sure you got him away from the rope. Yeah, the ring the placement has to be just right. Otherwise, he's going to get that rope break. And, but Masuma is showing no fear. You know, this man, he reminds me of uh, somebody we had in uh, TPP before. And uh, he just, they, they both are actually from the same general area. But uh, but Kanji, he reminds me of Kanji because Kanji had no fear. And that man would just give everything. But another big elbow drop from the big man uh, completely cementing uh, Masuma into the, into the mat there. And that was too... 400 plus pound elbow drops. Yeah, that those were rib collapsing for sure. And oh, the big oh. boot again. And Masuma is—he's having these spurts of high energy and high octane where he's doing great. But it's just one one move from Cerberus, and it, it sends Masuma into next week. And unfortunately, that's the way that it is sometimes. I mean, if, if Masuma could just get his head together, dodge one of these big moves pull off a, a good combination and possibly a finisher, he might have a chance at this. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm pleasantly surprised by the way that Masuma's been coming back. It, exactly. And, you know, I think part of it is with, uh, Cer well, Cerberus might be looking for this bound for Hades clothesline. Wait a second. Cerberus going off the ropes. Oh, the bound for uh, Hades. And Masuma just got turned inside out. Literally, inside out. Uh, it's over. And now Cerberus making sure that there's not going to be a rope break here. And uh, Estenda was saying something. I'm not sure. Oh, Jesus. Wait, okay. he, he doesn't need to do it again. Jesus, Cerberus, you don't need to do this again. And another bound for Hades clothesline. That's just sickening. The, the impact on that first one was just uh, one, two, three. And Cerberus just bulldozed Masuma and uh, I guess congratulations to uh, Cerberus although I don't know if he really wants us to congratulate him and I'm hoping that Masuma's alright I guess my better judgment 
and I'm not going to. I would have congratulated him from the first clothesline and picking up the win, but too bad for hate. He's clothesline on somebody as small as Masuma. That that's just sick. And you should get a stretcher down here for him. He's sad. Yeah, exactly. And ladies and gentlemen, while we do get some medical attention for Masuma, we're gonna cut back up to our broadcast colleagues, uh, and then we'll be right back with you in a few minutes for the final pre-show matchup. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, reckoning is upon us tonight. And uh, we're back up here at the broadcast panel, and, and it's time to talk the main event of TPP Reckoning. Scythe versus Adam D. Whitmore. McNabb, call it. Who do you think is going to win the TPP championship tonight? Well, you know me, Jerry. Uh, I quite like to remain neutral, but I'm going to go for uh, my Scottish homeboy here, Scythe. You know, he's representing Scotland, so and I'm Scottish, as you know, so I'm going to say Scythe. What, what do you think, Jerry? You know, as much as I want to, you know, I want to say that Adam D. Whitmore is going to bring this home for the good old U.S. of A., I, I kind of, part of me wants to agree with you because Scythe is a very dangerous individual, and uh, he's so, he's so gifted and he's he's so well conditioned when he wrestles. I mean, no, all the credit in the world given to Adam D. Whitmore. The kid's been training his entire life to be a wrestler, you know. And, and for Scythe, he was in the right time at the right place. Yeah, it's all about timing, really. Adam D. Whitmore. I reckon if he was in sooner, he would have been where Scythe probably is now. But you know, we can't take anything away from A. D. W. You know, he's he's quite a talent, but so is Scythe at the same time. It's going to be quite a phenomenal match. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're, we're talking prob probably two of the hottest prospects in TPP right now. And, uh, you know, Billings said it himself. And, uh, you know, Scythe is probably pound for pound the best wrestler in TPP right now. And I, I got a firm belief that Adam D. Whitmore is right there next to him or maybe one peg underneath him. But they're neck and neck. And that's why they both won that TPP title tournament. You know, that, that thing was grueling. It was, you know, 16 of the top TPP. TPP guys, you know, I was even in there and I got eliminated. Yeah, but that was by a sure shot. But uh, <laughs> um, to be honest, though, uh, I, I quite like to see Adam D. Whitmore push safe to the limit. If he does that, I reckon Adam D. Whitmore can prevail. But it's going to be a tough, tough task. That is very true. And uh, once again, you know, I, I love the guys in the back here in, in TPP. You know, they make these these video packages and then they, they put them on these pre-shows and they're like, hey, go play this. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so they made a video package kind of highlighting some of the highlights from the TPP title tournament. So enjoy that one, folks, and we'll be right back.
And, uh, you know, that, that package pretty much summed it all up, you know, coming down to ADW and Scythe. But a lot of people have uh, came up to me and said that Scythe wouldn't have won the turn or he wouldn't have won his part of the bracket for the tournament had Bryson not got involved, you know, which Bryson is no longer in TCO. I, I do agree with you there. Um, at the time, he was in TCO, but um, I do agree with you there, man. Uh, I think it was Die Hard's last-ditch effort to make sure that a TCO member went on into the final of the title tournament. However, though, we can't take away the fact that Scythe by himself beat other people before Cerberus, but uh, Cerberus was a big task for Scythe, so it's no surprise that Bryson came down at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, I, you know, I, I think Cerberus had his longest match with Scythe. I mean, Scythe, you know, kept getting up from, you know, every attack. I mean, Scythe took a lot of damage in that match. And unfortunately for ADW uh, on Strike Zone, we found out uh, after his match with James Braden, he suffered a, uh, a minuscule injury to, uh, he's got bruised ribs. And so we don't know how that's going to affect him tonight for Adam D. Whitmore. But, you know, I don't. I, I know Scythe is going to see that weakness, and he's going to expose it because that's what Scythe does. He's gonna he's gonna find that weakness, and he's gonna he's going to tear Adam D. Whitmore apart. But Adam D. Whitmore, he's got to he's got to be able to fight, and I think he can do. I think he can do it tonight. He can fight Scythe, and I think he could become the next TPP champion if he keeps his head in the game. I, I do agree with you. Uh, I've never seen Scythe get uh, aggravated quite yet you know he keeps a calm head at times but if MD Whitmore can get into Scythe's head then MD Whitmore will win this it's all about the mind games between Scythe and MD Whitmore exactly and uh, well McNabb it's almost that time because our final pre-show matchup is up next and uh, I'm looking forward to it it's got my boy Lance Owens in it and I love me some Lance Owens so we're actually going to cut down to ringside to uh, Lance Seeley and Tyler Case as they give us our final pre-show match of TPP Reckoning before the show begins. And ladies and gentlemen, we are at our final pre-show match. I'm Lance Seeley. And I'm Tyler Case. And we are, this is it. This is the final pre-show match after this matchup. Reckoning will begin in just a few moments after all this. We got Lance Owens uh, squaring off against Sergio Bricks, and and both of these these young men were both involved in that t that uh, extraneous TVP title tournament that stretched out, uh, you know, for the first uh, three episodes of uh, you know since our relaunch. And uh, for Lance Owens, you know, he got eliminated in the first round, but Sergio Bricks, he he made it all the way up until he got to James Braden. And, and yeah. Sergio Bricks was actually one of my favorites during that tournament, so I'm really excited to see how he performed. And, and, and although, you know, some people may think that being on the pre-show isn't a big deal, you know, for these wrestlers, sure. you know, they, they're wrestling, they're not just wrestling one time a week or two times a week. These, these, every wrestler here is in the gym. They're, they're uh, you know, doing uh, media events. They're doing everything constantly. They're always working. They, they don't get any days off, and, and especially a week like this, you know, uh, we on Monday there was that interview that Christopher Billings did with Die Hard. Um, you know, on, on Tuesday there was a broadcast special. On Wednesday, you know, Frontline. On Thursday there was Strike Zone, and on Friday there was you know, letting everybody know what's going to happen tonight. And you know, all the superstars were involved in all those things. And so for these guys, you know, after tonight they get this one night off, and then they got to start it all over next week. Yeah, unfortunately, they do. And me, I just get to go back home, go to sleep, and then come the next day to talk to people backstage, possibly. Exactly, you know, and then for us, it, it's very easy, but I, I'm glad that, you know, I'm not wrestling in the ring anymore, but for these guys, you know, they they go out here, they wrestle night in and night out, and they wrestle with injuries, they, you know, come out here to perform, and they all have these interesting, unique gimmicks like Sergio Briggs, you know, he's a Brazilian dancer. Mm, answer. Yeah, uh, I'm sure his exact occupation. It, it, it may be a little bit more uh, risque than uh, just a Brazilian dancer, but that's what uh, that's what it says on his application. So that's what we're gonna go with. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I'm. We'll, we'll just leave it at entertainer. 
it is exactly. actually good on a wrestling application. And here we go, Sergio Bricks and Lance Owens, and uh, Lance Owens quickly uh, getting on the offense there, the elbow right to the uh, to the back of the head, and that'll definitely make you see stars for a few minutes. Yeah, it's getting keeping control outside of Lance Owens. This is a, a very aggressive, we don't normally see this type of uh, aggressive Lance Owens. Uh, we never see uh, this aggressive of a Lance Owens, but I've noticed this since uh, since the relaunch. Lance Owens has gotten very uh, aggressive with his attacks, and as you see, Sergio Bricks already taking a breather, you know, on the pre-show here, and uh, the Lance Owens is still ready to go. He's calling him back in the ring while Sergio Bricks wants to go to the outside and dance, and that's going to cost him. Ooh, and Lance Owens, big clothesline right to the uh, right to the back of the head there, and, and Lance Owens, a, a flurry of strikes. The referee doing his count here. And, uh, you know, for them, for Sergio Bricks and Lance Owens, this is like their main event right now, you know, because they're the final, you know, the final match on the pre-show. So it's a, it's a big match for these two. And, and you got to believe that possibly when one of them, whoever wins this matchup, they may in the future get some type of title opportunity. But, uh, you know, you can't be 100% sure until, uh, until you know for sure. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to see either one of them going for a title opportunity. Exactly, and Lance Owens is one of uh, one of the personal favorites in TPP. Uh, for a lot of the the TPP fans, they 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 thoroughly enjoy Lance Owens. He uh, he brings a, a unique perspective. You know, he's from Nebraska. Uh, he's been called the steel chin of TPP, and uh, he takes it as a compliment. So, you know, for for Owens, that's a good thing. He is definitely the steel chin of TPP. I mean, both in looks with nothing against Lance Owens. And, I mean, he's taken some pretty hard hits and gotten right back up from him. Hits that I don't think any of the other smaller adrenaline-class superstars could could handle. Very true. And, and, and you know, the, the funny part is, is I, I know Christopher Billings talks about this, but me and you get to talk to a lot of the guys that don't get on the show every single week, like Lance Owens. And, and he's one of the nicest guys he I've really ever is. talked to. He's only concerned about coming out here and giving the people a good show. I mean, if the people get a good show, regardless of whether or not Lance Owens win match, he's had a good night. So, and a beautiful scoop slam there from Sergio Bricks, and you know, for Sergio Bricks, he was he was sure of himself during that title tournament that he was going to become the next TPP champion. And you know, Sergio Bricks, in his mind, you know, like he said uh, on Wednesday or uh, excuse me, last night on Friday night when he said. You know that he still feels that he deserved to be in the title picture. You know that that kind of spoke volumes because. Oh, you have. Oh, most definitely. And you have to believe that he's blowing off some steam in this match. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that elbow he just delivered to uh, to Lance Owens. I mean he may be a little angry. You know that he's not involved in that title in the title match night. But I I firmly believe that Adam D. Whitmore and Scythe, You know they both deserve it. They both blood, they, sweat, and they, tears out there. Oh. Definitely, they fought tooth and nail for that tournament to solidify their spot in the uh, TPP Championship at Reckoning, and they've definitely earned it. And I'm really excited to see that match happen. I am too. I am too. And uh, you know, unfortunately for for Adam D. Whitmore, you know, it. it I don't know if if you, if you haven't been watching the Twitter, the TPP uh, ENT Twitter, uh, just to get you up to speed, Adam D. Whitmore did suffer uh, a minor uh, bruised rib injury. Uh, on strike zone when he faced James Braden. Now I don't. We nobody really knows how that's gonna factor into his matchup tonight with Scythe. Um, you know, but for Adam D. Whitmore, uh, like Christopher Billing said before, he's trained his entire life to be a wrestler, so I'm sure he knows how to you know cope with this type of injury. From what what we understand, it was just a a, a muscle strain, so it shouldn't be anything too bad. But nice it's, clothesline. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful, nice clothesline from Lance Owens. And uh, I would, you know, I, I remember talking to Lance Owens a, uh, about a year ago, and he <clears> said that he came back from a, a very serious chest injury. Like mid-match, he uh, had he uh, busted or he caved in his uh, one of his lungs, and he was barely able to, you know, finish out the match. But he finished out the match, and like you were saying, you know, Lance Owens isn't so much about whether he wins or loses. He's here for the for the fans in attendance, and they they love it when he's here. So. Uh Absolutely. I mean, whenever Lance Owens has a match, you can literally see the front row light up because they they been a good match, and the steel chin of TPP is here. I mean, why can't you be happy? Exactly. He's one of those big corn-fed boys, and he, he loves to 
he, he's really big on hunting. I, I don't really get that, but he's really big on the hunting stuff. And Sergio went to the cover here too. And uh, he says when he's not working, he's hunting. So, you know, more power to him. I, I think he might need a haircut though. I, I think he needs a little bit more than a haircut. <laughs> And as you see, Lance Owens, though, he's making a little bit of a comeback. This has been a very back-and-forth matchup uh, between Sergio Bricks and Lance Owens. This has been very, very back-and-forth, you know, and it just shows you, um, you know, whoever wins the TPP title tonight between Adam D. Whitmore and, and Scythe, whoever wins, there is a long line of people that are eager for an opportunity. And as you see, Lance Owens taking a little breather outside here and and pulling the ropes here, right on the, uh, pulling the throat right onto the uh, the top rope there. And, and those Sergio are... Sergio recovered quicker than I think Lance Owens was expecting him to. Yeah, and uh, surpr that surprises me, you know, because those are those are steel cables with a little bit of uh, braided wire on top of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, that, that, that doesn't feel too good, like, stretched out onto your Adam's apple or anything like that. So, Ooh, big for him to recover the that fast, that, that says a lot to uh, uh, Sergio's, what I'm looking for resistance it, yeah yeah the resiliency of Sergio is, is spectacular a beautiful seated spine buster there and uh, you don't see many seated spine busters where they do the full rotation with them and then you know uh, do a seat seated position with them but Sergio now a beautiful dancing elbow drop type maneuver driving all of his weight right into the chest and of one, uh, Owens two and a kick out yeah yeah a, a kick out from Lance Owens here as uh, as uh, it looks like Sergio may st uh, be getting a little frustrated yeah, oh, most definitely. I mean, we're close to reckoning, and like you said, he was so confident that he was going to be in that uh, title match. Not only that, but, I mean, he just can't seem to put Lance Owens away, and Lance Owens keeps coming back and right back to him. I mean, look at him brawling on the outside right now. So space telling him to bring it on, and a nice punch to the chin. I mean, he has got frustration. You know, the thing is, and, and a lot of people, this is kind of a running joke at TVP, but if somebody was to punch Lance Owens like that, they say that he would just smile. But, you know, when... when it's uh, that still chin. Like, <laughs> it's a joke as much as it is a fact. I mean, you punch that chin, you feel it more than Lance Owens does. He does He does have a very... He, he is a very shaped man when it comes to his uh, his, his face. He, he is very shaped. He's, he, he has a very powerful chin. I, I think he could probably, you know, open a bottle with his chin if he really wanted to. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, Lance, I know you're going to watch this, you know, backstage, you know, after the show, and we love you. We love you, Lance. We love you. Absolutely. TPP would be TPP without you. Exactly. It wouldn't be the same without Lance Owens and Sergio Bricks. Big clothesline to the back. The referee is still counting here. Uh, this is... Man. Yeah. Okay, they're finally in the ring. Oh, wait, nope. Sergio's deciding to dance. Sergio, you got to get your head in the game now. Exactly. Now Owens going off the ropes, but Sergio catching... Uh, Lance Owens with a, a spine buster. Now Sergio might be looking for, uh, a, he might be looking to put this away. Exactly. And Sergio, wait, he's got the big, he's got Owens up. And then the knees oh. to the back from the power bomb. And that's a full elevation right onto the knees. One, two, three. And Sergio Bricks somehow pulled it out, picked up the win tonight on the final okay, so match. Sure if he wasn't going to be able to in the title match tonight, pick up a win on, a, I guess, what we could call the main event of our pre-show. Exactly, and, uh, you know, so congratulations to Sergio, and we want to thank you for joining both me and Tyler tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you guys, uh, Reckoning is going to begin in just a few minutes. We're going to shoot back up to our broadcast panel real quick. They're just going to give you a final rundown, and Reckoning is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I'm Lance Owens. And I'm Tyler Case. All right, and we will see you. Oh, man, that's a tough break for my boy, Lance Owens, Alex. I, I tell you, I'm, I'm kind of sad that he lost. Say, man, I'm, I'm sad that the chin's all lost, man, the iron chin, but got to give a fair credit to Sergio Bricks. Yeah, Sergio Bricks is a tough competitor, no doubt about that. And ladies and gentlemen, do Lance Owens a favor. Let's get Chinzilla trending on Twitter. And I've just noticed right now that uh, the countdown. Yeah, dude, what the... that countdown means, McNabb? 
less than five minutes and TPP Reckoning is going to be live. Yeah, and that's, go- that's going to be great. It really is going to be great because I'm going to look forward to just sitting back in this chair with you, Jerry. Hopefully we can pop off a couple of beers and just watch Reckoning. Oh, yeah, we could we could get really wasted tonight because uh i ain't wrestling tonight i'm just i'm just spectating and watching so yeah we could definitely sit up here in this broadcast booth and kick them back hopefully though they let us you know not sit in these uncomfortable chairs anymore but ladies and gentlemen we are less than four and a half minutes away from tpp reckoning beginning and it is going to be a blast i tell you what and uh, they're getting ready to pull up that match card screen real quick but, uh, you know, showing all the matches. But we have a lot in store for you guys tonight. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I hope you're excited, McNabb. I mean, I, I know I am. Yeah, I am too, man. And uh, hopefully, you know, it turns out to be a great, great showing because, you know, we got the TPP title. We got the TPP title on the line. We got the hardcore t- title on the line. And we got even Mark Lester versus Damien Gamer, which is going to be a proving point for Mark. Lester, so uh, exactly. I'm looking forward to this. Exactly, and for Mark Lester, you know, he's got to try to prove that he can beat Damian Gamer, not just get steamrolled by him again, but my boy Damian Gamer, he is an unrelenting SOB, and then, you know, the hardcore championship. I'm pulling for Hanzo tonight, man. Yeah, now, I feel you, man, because he looks as though he, you know, he's got that type of urgency about him, you know, I feel as though it's going to be Hanzo, but you know, anything can happen in TVP, but I hope that Hanzo does win here tonight. Exactly, and then exclusive DLC versus the newly named Coco Buffs instead of the Chocolate Drops. I don't know why they changed their name, but the tag team titles are on the line. Exclusive DLC, I love those guys. They, they play Call of Duty, I play Call of Duty, we should do Jerry Graham and exclusive DLC in a live stream, play some Call of Duty brother. Yeah, man, then we got the TP Adrenaline Championship. Sage versus Victor Yosa. What a match. This will be two upcoming young talents face to face for the TPP Adrenaline Championship. Exactly. And, you know, like I said before, Sage was kind of on the losing end against Victor before, but not as bad as what Bryson has been as of late. The Internet Championship, Brick Wall versus Bryson. Brick Wall has came in and he has been steamrolling Bryson from that tag team match when he punched him in the face. And he keeps punching Bryson in the face. If he keeps punching him in the face, he's going to knock him out. No doubt about that. And, uh, you know, good luck to Bryson tonight. And then we've got Jordan Moore, the, up, uh, the learner versus Die Hard, the traitor. This is going to be one hell of a battle. And this is, this is going to be Jordan Moore versus Die Hard number two. You know, we, everybody saw it in 2011, but we get to see it in 2014. And then, of course, the TPP Championship. Adam D. Whitmore, the man who's trained his entire life to wrestle, sight, the the, the the apex predator, the A-plus player, the man right now in TPP. He's the man that you want to be. He's, he's, he's got it all right now. And ladies and gentlemen, we are almost a minute and a half, 90 seconds away from the beginning of TPP Reckoning. And make sure that you guys... You know, you guys watch that because if you miss out on it, then, you know, it will be up on YouTube. But however, you'll miss out on all the action of the fans, you know, miss out on everyone's reactions. And I hope that everyone here does watch it. And, uh, you know, what, what match are you, what, out of all those matches, which one are you looking to forward to the most? Mm. Jerry? Well, like like I said earlier, I, I, I like the hardcore environment, but the more I think about it, I'm, I kind of got to agree with you. I'm looking forward to the Die Hard versus Jordan Moore match, but... But, but most of all, I'm looking forward to that TPP title match because I want to know who is the man, who is going to be the man in TPP. There's a been there's been a big hole since Craig Hazard didn't renew his contract with TPP. We need a champion. Who is it going to be? Adam D. Whitmore or Scythe? We're going to find out in just a little while. Yeah, and uh, we'll also find out who will become you know the new tag team champions. We'll also find out who becomes the newly crowned hardcore champion. And everyone tonight can cement a legacy, even if that legacy is losing. But hell, at least they were there at the time. Exactly. They're going to go down in the history books regardless. And ladies and gentlemen, we are at the 22nd mark. If you have not ordered TPP Reckoning yet, make sure to call your... Oh, wait, we don't have to tell them to call their cable or satellite provider because this is free and it's over the internet. Ten seconds, ladies and gentlemen, TPP Reckoning. I'm Jerry Graham. And I'm Alex McNabb. And we will see you guys later.